UV visible spectroscopy is very similar to atomic absorption spectroscopy. However, whereas atomic absorption uh, dealt with uh, straightforward atoms and sim just it dealt with elements by themselves, UV visible spectroscopy can deal with uh, substances besides elements. So it can deal with molecular compounds and uh, other sorts of substances like that. So not just elements. Now, before we start understanding how the process works, we need to understand a little bit about how light and color work. So if we've got a simple leaf off a tree like this, obviously this leaf is green. Now, why does this leaf look green? Why are we seeing this green color on the leaf? Well, basically what we're seeing is the green light that is reflected by the leaf. The reason we see uh, the leaf as being green is that the leaf itself absorbs green light, absorbs all other colors of light besides green light and reflects the green light. And so we see only the light that it reflects. Uh, the same with anything, the same with, uh, you know, any, any sort of household or any, any item you can think of. The, co the reason we see it as a certain color is because that is the color or the mixture of colors that is reflected by the object. The rest of the colors are absorbed and so we see what's left over. We see the colors that aren't absorbed, in this case, by the leaf. So green is not absorbed by the leaf and that's why we can see its color. Now, UV visible spectroscopy is very similar to atomic absorption spectroscopy, as I said. However, it deals more with this idea of the color that things are and how we can analyze that more, uh, more technically. Now, the first step when we're trying to analyze something using UV visible spectroscopy is to uh, identify the pure substance that we're testing. So let's stick with this idea of leaves and let's say we're trying to find out the content of chlorophyll in a given, tr in a given uh, piece of plant matter. So chlorophyll is the stuff in plants that makes it look green. So we're trying to look, trying to analyze chlorophyll content. Now, if we want to analyze chlorophyll content, then basically the way UV visible spectroscopy works is that we have a light here. We have a lamp that radiates all wavelengths of light. And what we do is we have our we have a slit here and a monochromator, which is just a glass prism. And what we do is we use the slit and the monochromator to uh, basically select one wavelength of light. So once once we pass this uh, this this light that contains all frequencies of light, we select one wavelength and we pass that one wavelength through a solution of our sample cell. So this is our cell containing our, sam our sample solution. So we've got our sample cell here, we've got a monochromator. And we've got a slit. So the slit and the monochromator uh, select a single wavelength of light to pass through the sample cell. And then that uh, the light is passed through and then goes to the detector. And so, depending on what wavelength of light is being selected, the sample cell will absorb it to a different extent. Based, so in that, in that way, it's very similar to atomic absorption spectroscopy. Now, the first step, UV visible spectroscopy, uh, before I go into that, is quantitative. It's off, nearly always used for quantitative analysis. So it deals with amounts and concentrations. It can be used for qualitative or identification of substances. However, we're going to go through quantitative uh, analysis. So if we want to quantitatively analyze the, the concentration of chlorophyll or the amount of chlorophyll in a sample solution, the first step that we need to do is we need to obtain a pure sample of chlorophyll. So not the sample that we're using, but a separate pure sample of chlorophyll. And we want what we want to do is we want to create an absorbent spectrum like the one we've got here. So this is an absorbance spectrum. So what, how, the way that we create that is we put our pure sample of chlorophyll in, our, in, in this spot here and we, do, we, we select our wavelength of light and we detect its absorbance. However, what we do is we move through all of the wavelengths of light as I've shown here and we, we can create this graph of absorbance versus wavelength. And then the reason we do that is so that we can choose which wavelength uh, to measure the absorbance of uh, in our in our in our sample containing chlorophyll, in our rougher sample, our non-pure sample. So basically, 
if we have a sample of if our if the sample that we're testing is maybe a leaf, we've got a leaf, we've crushed it up, and we've made the leaf into a solution. Now, that solution is going to contain chlorophyll, and it's going to contain other pieces of leaf matter, and so those other pieces of leaf matter could interfere with our absorbance. So what we do is we get this spectrum for our pure sample. And what we want to do is the wavelength that we want to conduct all our tests at, we choose the wavelength based on what's absorbed, uh, what's the, the wavelength of light that is absorbed highly by chlorophyll. However, we also want to make sure we choose a wavelength of light that is not going to be absorbed very highly by the other leaf matter in our solution, because that's really going to, going to make some errors in our results. So we want to choose a, a wavelength that is absorbed highly by chlorophyll, however, that is not absorbed highly by the other leaf matter that is going to be in our solution. So once we've chosen our wavelength, we, we set our monochromator and slit up such that that is the only wavelength passing through. So that is the first step. We, we conduct this pure sample spectrum. And then so once we've selected our wavelength, we set it up so that's the only wavelength we've got. And then we, this cell here is the cell that we're sort of dealing with and changing all the time. So to start off with, the first thing that we're going to put in this cell here, the first cell that we're going to put in is going to be a reference cell. So first of all, we, can, we, we basically, we fill a glass, we're, we're using sort of a glass or transparent cell to contain our solutions in here. So the first step in our reference cell is to put a, a glass container of just the solvent that we're using. So if we're just dissolving our leaf and our chlorophyll sample just in water, then the first thing that we do is we put a cell just containing water in here, and we measure the absorbance of our given frequency of light. This way we can, uh, we can sort of make sure we remove any error that's going to come about as a result of uh, the absorbance of the light by the water that has dissolved our leaf sample. So we've got this reference cell containing just water and we're going to see how that affects, how, how that absorbs light. Next what we do is we put our sample cell. So this is the cell that, has cont that contains the, our dissolved leaf. So we put our dissolved leaf solution in here and we test its absorbance. Now here this is where the reference cell comes in. Basically uh, if we have an absorbance, say, of, of an absorbance figure of 1 for the sample, and our reference cell has an absorbance of 0 0.2, then the difference between these two is 0 0.8. So that means that if we sort of set our reference cell absorbance to a 0 point, uh, then we can say that the absorbance of just the chlorophyll, not the, uh, just, the just the leaf sample, and, and not the water that it's dissolved in is 0 0.8. So this kind of removes any effect of the water. So we, we're seeing that the effect of the water is an absorbance of 0 0.2 and so we can take that away from the absorbance uh, value for our sample solution. So the, the absorbance of our of our leaf, of the leaf matter, is 0 0.8. So we, we do this sample cell, so we've used our reference to, to set a new 0 point and so our, the absorbance of our sample is in fact 0 0.8, that's the value we're going to use. So we use the sample and what's next is just like we have in a, in a few other forms of analysis, we, we run standards. So we run standard solutions of known concentrations of chlorophyll, and we see their absorbance. And from there, we can create a graph and analyze our concentration of chlorophyll in our leaf sample. So that is how this process works. So we've got, if for example, we stick with the chlorophyll, uh, we stick with the chlorophyll idea and the leaf idea. Let's go through a, a full example of how we can do this. So we're analyzing chlorophyll. So we get our pure sample of chlorophyll and we, we, uh, we run it through all the wavelengths and get a spectrum like this. And so we've, we can see here the wavelengths at which chlorophyll absorbs light quite uh, by quite a large amount. Now we look down here, this is the absorbent spectrum for the rest of the leaf matter that is in our leaf. So here we've only done the pure sample of our uh, of chlorophyll here, this is the other leaf matter that is contained in the leaf. So we can see here that there's a big peak in the in the pure spectrum for chlorophyll here. However, there's a big peak pretty close by in our uh, spectrum for other leaf matter. So this one is probably not a good idea because there's going to be a bit of contribution, quite a large contribution to the absorbance of the other leaf matter that isn't chlorophyll. The same goes for this peak here. 
I've got a peak here, so the, the, the leaf matter that we don't want to analyze is going to get in the way and it's going to absorb lots of light. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this peak here. So we check the wavelength and we set our monochromator to only let that wavelength of light through. Now, so we've got now what we do now is we we simply we do we fill a cell, we fill a glass transparent cell with just water and we check how much that absorbs. So we've done that and then we run our sample. So we'll say that uh, the reference cell, uh, we'll say that the reference cell had an absorbance of 0 0.2, just like we did up here. Now, now we run the sample, so we get our leaf and we dissolve it in water and we get it's we, we fill a cell with that dissolved solution up here, uh, up up there in our uh, just in our glass in our glass cell, and we we test its absorbance. And so let's say we do that again, and we'll say that our sample cell gets an absorbance has it shows an absorbance of. Zero of 1.4. So that means our sample cell, we will list it as 1.2 down here. Once we ignore the, once we consider the effect of uh, the solvent by itself. So we've got our absorbance for our sample cell, and now we use a set of standard solutions, which we've shown the results of here. So the concentrations of the concentrations are in parts per million. So if we've got two parts per million, we get an absorbance of 0 0.48, and these have all had the, uh, the effect of the solvent considered. So these this might have come out as 0 0.68, but uh, we've, we've adjusted it to 0 0.48 because of the reference cell. So these are all already adjusted. Now we've got these standards, and so now we're going to create the graph. We're going to create the graph that's going to allow us to figure out what's going on. So if we draw our graph up here, so we've got concentration here, an absorbance up here, and what we're going to do, we're going to plot these three sample or standard solution data points on our graph. So if we draw this to scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll say that that is 0 0.5, 1, and 1.5. Now, if we plot these three data points, we've got 2 and 0 0.48, so that's going to be there. We've got 4.5 and 1.08. So we're just we're forming a straight line here, and we've got 6.0 and 1.44. So those are our data points. Now, if we rule a line through those data points, so we're getting a ruler out, but it's a bit of a rough a rough linear graph. Let's go over our data points. And so that's the graph that we have. This is our, our relationship between absorbance and concentration for our given apparatus and our, uh, and our given substance, in this case, chlorophyll. So what we do now, we, are, we check to see the concentration of our sample. So we've got 1.2 here. So we are 1.2, sorry, up here. So if we run it across, and we run it down, we see that we end up with a at a concentration of 5.0 parts per million. So that is how UV visible spectroscopy works. That is our concentration of chlorophyll in this solution up here. And so we can go back. We can, if we weighed the mass of the leaf, then we could figure out uh, the exact sort of uh, content by mass of chlorophyll in that leaf to start with. But here we've just got the concentration of the chlorophyll in our solution that we created here. So that's how UV visible spectroscopy works. We have to first, depending on what the sample is, we obtain a pure sample of what we're analyzing, a pure sample of the pure substance that we want to analyze. We get an absorbent spectrum. And now we, we, we choose a wavelength that is uh, absorbed strongly by our pure sample and a wavelength that is not going to be absorbed strongly by, by anything else that is going to be in our sample solution. 
So in this case, we've chosen that wavelength there because it's flat on this graph. There's no absorbance by the other leaf matter. Then from there, so we choose that wavelength, we set our monochromator to that wavelength, and then we do all our subsequent analysis at that wavelength. So then what we do is we get our reference cell to see the effect of, uh, of the solvent that we're using and make sure we take that into consideration for the rest of our calculations. Then we, uh, we create our sample solution by dissolving, in this case, our leaf into that same solvent, and then we check its absorbance. What we do next is we, we take some standard solutions of known concentration of chlorophyll. And we measure their absorbance to create this graph here. Finally, by plugging in the absorbance of our sample cell, we can find out its concentration uh, from this graph there. So there are a few steps involved with UV visible spectroscopy, but uh, this region down here is the same as what uh, with the graph and the analysis where we put our absorbance into the graph and, and, and get its concentration is similar to what we've dealt with in atomic absorption spectroscopy as well as uh, column chromatography. So it's just the same as those processes. So that is how UV visible spectroscopy works. It just deals with the colors that get absorbed by uh, different different uh, substances in our world. And we are, we can analyze their, their, these substances and their concentrations using, uh, using these levels of absorbance.